Welcome to the Divorce View Talk Show. Hello, it's Joni Winberg, divorce mentor and facilitator of the How to Survive Emotionally and Financially, the group coaching call called How to Emotionally and um, Financially Survive Divorce. It's my pleasure today to bring on a special guest, and uh, her name is Marika Lindholm, and she is actually founder of Empowering Solo Moms Everywhere. And I'm really excited to bring her on. And it's a little bit different angle that we're doing. So we're honoring all solo moms, and we're just thrilled to be able to do this. So, Marika, th thanks for joining us, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Johnny. I'm happy to be here. So, tell us a little bit about what this is all about, and then who it actually can support as well as why why um, you had started this program or this um, group? Well, it's a website dedicated to all moms who raise children on their own, and we call ourselves ESME, which is Empowering Solo Moms Everywhere. And I use the term solo mom because we encompass not just divorced moms, but moms who are raising children on their own for a variety of reasons, which could be death or deployment or partner incarcerated or perhaps a, a solo mom by choice. A lot of women are who are getting older deciding to make that decision or abandonment. So there's a variety of reasons why women end up raising kids on their own. And um, I was inspired because I got divorced when my kids were three and five and it was very, very difficult. And I was a professor and I had resources and I thought, wow, if it's this hard for me, it must be so impossible for women in less you know fortunate economic situations or with less friends or family to help them so um i just as a sociologist made a commitment to figure out what was the best kind of site or resource that we could provide and then esme was um born <laughs> well, and then how long how long ago did you start the the um website of the program well the group? i i um came up with the idea two years ago and did focus groups first, really did a lot of research on what kind of help women would need. And then we launched six months ago. So we're very young and um, it's been a real fun ride because we have, um, we also hire solo moms to write for us and as guides. And so we provide resources, we provide support, we provide um, connection. We actually match moms of similar circumstances and interests. And we have um, poetry and art and music that we showcase that's by solo moms. So it's a pretty expansive site with just um, trying to bridge these different communities and show how they can support each other. Well, I love it. And, and that's why when you and I talked, uh, the, top, the title is far as um, solo doesn't mean alone. And I just can't stress that enough. I know as far as dealing with mostly women after divorce or during divorce, it can be a very lonely time and people do feel alone. So to me, I just jumped all over this when I connected with you and we met through a, a common person that we have a friend that right. was, I was just so glad she introduced us because I just support women who are going through whatever transition it is and, and helping them be the best they can be, be move on. And the similarity that we had when I got divorced 20 years ago, really there was nothing out there as far as a mentor. It was pretty much a family counselor, which was great. I, I appreciated the support. But then when I was ready and excited to move on, that's where I found the void. There weren't that many programs or support teams or focus groups or anything like that. So you know, hats off to you for taking it to the next step to help all moms, whatever position they might be in or whatever challenges they're experiencing. Right. And you too for being a pioneer, which is great. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I, I, I felt the same way. I, I looked around, I thought, I want some resources and there weren't any. And I thought, I want, there must be other women feeling this way, you know, so Right, right. Common. So as I said, we're talking about solo doesn't mean alone. And some of the things that you wanted to talk about was expand your network. So what does that mean? And give us some insight of how that can support women. I will. Here's where I put my sociology hat on because um, I am a sociologist and there's a lot of data to support that there are certain types of networks that are better than other networks. And mm -hmm. so... Uh, as you know, you've probably seen many women go through this, but when they get divorced, they often um, lose many of their friends because it was the, the couple that was a friend or 
some friends just kind of you know fade away and so your network changes dramatically and so what I encourage women to do is to build what they call a very dense network and a dense network is one where sociologists call it strong ties and weak ties and um, strong ties are those the friends and family that you're very connected to and weak ties are those that are kind of people in your social circle but also outside of it and that's the surprising part of the data where you're like well why would I you know how what use are they to me mm -hmm. well actually the pioneering work of sociologists showed that most people get their first job most people get their uh, leg up from someone not who's a strong tie but a weak tie mm. so then I'm taking it a step further and I think that thinking about the strong tie we need support we need our family we need our friendship circle but the weak ties are very beneficial so if you think of people who are disconnected from your social circle they might be the ones that tell you about babysitters that you wouldn't know about all your friends know about the same babysitter or they might be able to tell you about a great class you know across town that your kid would fit perfectly and so you know, I argue that you want to have this dense network where you can get the emotional support and the practical support that comes with the weak tie. So mm -hmm. do everything you can, grab every business card, Facebook friend people, you know, accept uh, the person who's, you know, who's going to drive your kids to the soccer game. I mean, that's, you know, that's part of all building your network. So, mm. And it's great to be that resource because I know I had a lot of help in that type of, of, of friendships and now I feel as though I'm I'm now on the other end so when I see new solo moms going through things you know now I'm the one giving them the support and the resources just from you know me whether my neighborhood or town or area so it's very very important and also it gets you out so that you don't feel alone and that's that's important just to have some kind of support. I know our area, it wasn't even for solo moms, but it was just for moms. Back in the 90s, a lot of women didn't work as much as they do today. And women wanted to connect. They were all home, probably going a little crazy with toddlers. Right. And we just had Tuesday morning meetings where the moms would just connect to talk to a human adult, you know, a human being. That's oh, I know. Adult. <laughs> and then, you know, the children would play, which was good for them. But back then it was just nice to meet at a local church hall and we were just happy to have the company. So you can see how powerful that network can be. I know. I know for my um, situation, you know, I was an academic, married to an academic, and we just, uh, we were in the same department and it just was so tight that when we divorced it was just kind of tough on everyone and people paired off and yeah. you know it's it somewhat alienating and I realized I had to find you know make make my way a little bit differently from there. Absolutely absolutely and then you never know they can uh, come in just be there just the right time. Exactly. Um, you also wanted to talk about um, accept help <laughs> yeah, this is a big theme for Esme. Um, when I did my focus groups, I first went to my friends um, in the Chicago area, and I said, "I have this idea, and it's this, you know, a support site for solo moms." And they were like, well, "I don't need it, and I'm fine." And yeah, yeah. they all were kind of brushing it off, like, "I don't really need help." Yeah. And um, one of the things I've learned is that there's, I call it, you know, the independent mom complex, you know, like I can do this myself. I don't need help. I'm fine. Yet, um, you know, I've been reading, we, we process about a hundred, over a hundred articles a month from solo moms and the challenges that they face. And, you know, without fail, they always say, accept help, accept help, At, you know, mm -hmm. be willing to. So, and then also, I feel like we're also somewhat teaching people that it's okay to not be perfect you know you don't have to feel guilty it's okay to um you know have a really bad parenting day as a solo mom uh, i think it's particularly acute for women who have decided to go forward and raise a child on their own because mm -hmm. people will just say to them well you wanted this you want to do this on your own so they feel like they're they can't really complain oh. so, you know, you know and, and then, or the or the person who initiated the divorce, you know, the mom, and they're like, oh well, that's what you wanted, you know. So I yeah. feel like it's a it's one of the things that Esme tries to do, and and I personally try to do is affirm that it's really hard, mm. and there are times when you need support, and you know, I'm sure you've heard the cliche about the oxygen mask, right? But yeah. you're not very good to a, a child unless you yourself are taken care of, and yeah. so. 
self-care is really important and that's often accepting help. Mm. And a lot of our moms um, are going through like they're parenting kids with special needs or they sure. might be struggling with, um, you know, addiction or they might have other challenges that, you know, or, or breast cancer, like they, they need to accept help mm. and it's okay. It shouldn't be seen as a failure at all. In fact, it should feel like it's a community. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. I actually do in the summertime retreats right here in my home for women cancer survivors. And it's just a joy to see them. I think when they're on the other end and they're survived the whole process, they're more open. In fact, they feel lonely and they're happy to join some kind of a group or a social event type thing. Right. But yet, I think, do you find that women just tend to be or tend to say, well, you know, if I do that, then that same, or maybe they say already to themselves that I'm not good enough or it has something to do with that. If I, if I say that, then it's going to show that I made a yeah, mistake. Absolutely. I mean, we absolutely have a culture of blaming moms for, mm -hmm. you know, the kid, whatever happens with a child or the mom wasn't sufficient or the mom, you know, mom guilt is omnipresent. It doesn't matter what kind of soul a mom you are or even, you know, paired up. Uh, I think the guilt is there. And I think that it, you know, showing weakness, unfortunately, is seen as, I mean, I don't think it's weak to accept help, but I think that that's, that's pretty much perceived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, and I, I'm totally guilty of this because when I went through my divorce, I ended up having some strange blood disorder where I was very, very ill. And I just didn't tell anyone. I didn't, I just can finally, my friends were like, you look terrible. Like, <laughs> we're, we're taking you to the doctor. And it, this is not just stress. You know, I just kept coughing her up to like, I, I'm just stressed out and I'll work through this. And, you know, ultimately I needed, you know, medical attention. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it was a pretty strong lesson that you shouldn't just power through because mm. I was pretty close to, you know, not, it was bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a great story. So that, you know, it's okay to ask, like you said, for help. Right. Um, I know men don't tend to ask for help either. I, I find in this arena, women will though raise their hands first for support during and after right. divorce. Uh, the men that I have worked with, they, they said, well, I, I don't need support. I generally go to my local you know, club or bar and, and just have a beer and talk to the guy next to me. And I'd say, well, that's okay. But what happens when you want to continue that conversation the next week? Just, you know, happen if that guy's not there this time and you just start your story over again. And, you know, so I just, you know, so, you know, uh, but the thing of it is, it is okay to say I need support and I need help. And, and I just think that's the way to go. You know. Right, and a, and a community, you will then help them once, you know, the reciprocity is there. So once, you know, with my friends, they were so powerful in helping me that I, of course, want to help them through whatever challenge they're going to face. And we all have moments that we have greater challenges than other moments. Mm -hmm. so. and, I th and I think a lot with what I'm working with my clients is I let them know that, hey, this is okay. This is not, there isn't any judgment or anything. This is just okay. You know, we all right. have our moments and it's okay to, to do that. And and just think about if you learn more about yourself or learn more about how you can be the best mom, why not? You know, so let's right. let's expand our fields and, and learn more and, and be that great role model that we want to be. I agree. And one of the, the aims with the site was the reason I wanted it to be for all solo moms is I felt that, and we also have moms that have been through it and are now remarried or whatever, but their mm. expertise is invaluable. Mm. So they can look back and say, hey, this is really hard and this is what you can do. And the, so the shared wisdom is really valuable. You know, you can, someone, and I, you know, whenever I hear someone's getting divorced, I'm sure you feel the same thing. You're like, oh, you don't know how hard it's going to be, but, you know, mm. then sharing and say, oh, well, here's a shortcut to this, or here's how we can help you out and mm. you know, I'll be there for you. But um, definitely. Um, great advice. Um, the other one you want, the other point you wanted to talk about was find your tribe. Right. What's that mean? <laughs> this is a theme. This is a theme that's come up and we have different areas of the site that are dedicated to particular challenges. And um, one of the first uh, articles I read was about a woman who was coming out of a domestic violence situation. And there, there's a lot of shame and there's a lot of, um, you know, it's hard to be very 
public about what's happening in your life. And so she sought support through other, you know, on the internet and different. And so she found a group of women that had been through it. And I think that that's a really good message and something that we can draw on for other situations. So finding the group that really gets it. Mm. Finding the people who've been there. And I know for myself, I ended up gravitating to women who also were solo moms and they weren't going to judge me if there was yeah, dishes yeah. piled up or, you know, or we could go out and think about, oh, are we going to do match.com? Or, yeah, <laughs> I mean, sure. You know, I mean, it was like, it, I just needed a group, you know, I was in academia and it sort of can be uptight. And I felt like I needed to go outside of that world and find women who were going to have more fun and be less judgmental. And then some of them are still my closest friends. Actually the director of operations is, um, you know, one of my friends from that time. And so, well, that's, that's really um, important because I think you hit upon a note that most women are leery of as far as that judgment right. and, and, and feeling that, judgment and and I know friends and family do mean well but if they haven't been through whether they lost a loved one hi Roz welcome hi, hi nice to meet you <laughs> this is Rob my co-host here we're actually uh, Roz just talking about uh, one of her points that we were talking about is find your tribe and how when uh, when you find whether it's your solo mom or a mom that's gone through divorce or lost a loved one or a victim of domestic violence when you find that group and you have that natural support without the judgment and we're just talking about how the judgment can really be difficult even though family and friends mean well but if they haven't been through that challenge they give you good advice, but sometimes you do feel like you're being judged. But um, we're just carrying that through, Roz. <laughs> uh, judgment is definitely one of the harshest things that people do to one another and can have a lasting influence. So I'm glad you're covering that. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah, one of the things that happened to me was um, someone very close to me when I went through my divorce wrote me a long letter detailing why I should not do this and it's a terrible thing and my children are going to be damaged and you know all this and we just you know we lost contact and then ten years later, guess who got divorced uh -huh. and reached out to me, <laughs> <you> apologize. <laughs> And maybe maybe both of you have seen this too. I, I remember my grandmother um, having a friend who never had children and when my kids were little and we would go to lunch and they were little but they were still pretty well behaved. would go for a quick sandwich and she would always have words of wisdom of how they should behave and it used to drive my grandmother crazy because she'd say, do you notice that people who do not have children have all the words of wisdom and, and make all these judgments. You know, I remember her saying, that. So we used to just laugh along with her, but we didn't really take it too seriously. <laughs> so that's for sure. The um, some of the things that we've covered, uh, we talked about finding your tribe, ask for help, which is so important. A lot of women sometimes don't want to ask for help, and then also expand your network and and um, and and understanding that. Um, solo, me, being solo does not mean that you're alone. I wanted to take this second as far as Marika, if you can make sure that people know the website and where they can go and what's some of the things on the website that they can expect to see. Great, i um, happy to do so. Um, so it's Esme.com and we have a Facebook page as well and we're on Twitter and uh, at Esme.com you can find uh, one thing is over 5,000 resources mm -hmm. of nonprofits that we've Put together, we have 20 key areas of um, focus, ranging from addiction, adoption, to childcare, housing, uh, public assistance, well-being, and uh, adoption. So we, it's 20 major areas with over 5,000 resources that are available, and moms are welcome to come on and rate those resources and to. Um, give us new ones. We're always hoping for people to, I, I see it as an expanding data set that will just grow and get bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And um, in that resource area we have guides and the guides are all, all have professional and personal experience with this, this area. So, um, and they write for us, which is exciting. Then we have something called Ask Esme where we draw on the wisdom of the whole community. So you can ask a question and get an answer from any mom who wants to answer. 
Mm -hmm. uh, something that's very unique about our site is that it's all confidential. One of the things I learned in focus groups is that um, women in smaller towns and going through divorce, they don't really want to share things in their life and maybe it goes through the gossip mill and um, you know things on Facebook are very public. So we use uh, usernames and icons and so you should be feel free to ask any awkward question or any thing that might be embarrassing or hard to, to talk about with your friends and your family. And I think that's a huge benefit to the community. And um, we also showcase art and music and poetry by solo moms and films. So we want to show that their identity is just not about being a mom raising kids on their own, but we all have these other identities that we can um, tap into, not necessarily as the creator of that art or music, but also just appreciating it. Mm, I love it, love it. Yeah, it's, that's a pretty dynamic part. And then the, one of the more exciting parts for me is something called Voices, and Voices is where we have video and writing by solo moms to just express anything. Mm. Things that, you know, we, we have to actually have a timeout corner as well. We time out people who are, <laughs> so people, moms can write in and if they want to time out someone who said something awful in the press about solo moms or is doing something that is, you might be hurting the solo mom plight. Uh, but voices is where you'll, we hear quite extraordinary stories, stories such as, um, you know, a woman whose husband became profoundly mentally ill, and she wrote a very powerful story about seeing him out in the street picking through trash and explaining to her son, you know, and that, that got shared over and over in social media. And then we have um, stories of a woman who asked for a divorce and then her uh, spouse killed himself. So they're like, you know, and they're not all har harsh like this, sure. but they're the ones that really, you know, are very powerful. And then there's some very hilarious stories about, you know, parenting things gone awry or um, tongue-in-cheek things about, New we have one called New Year's Eve is the worst holiday for solo moms. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we, uh, we try to have fun, we try to support, but, and we try to connect, and that's the final piece that is, I think, the most exciting is that we have a part called Sisters, and we connect women, they fill out five questions, they get five matches, and for every additional question they fill out, they'll get a matched with someone who has similar circumstances, similar age kids, similar age to themselves. Um, and the challenges part, going back to finding your tribe, we have a host of challenges. Maybe they have a child with ADHD. Maybe they have, um, you know, someone who's incarcerated in their family or Parkinson's or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. we, we try to match um, with another solo mom sister that can really understand. And it could be a great combination where a, a mom, a woman um, did lose her husband or is divorced plus having you know like someone with ADHD in their family or a child so you can see where the connection is very powerful and I just wanted to make sure that our listeners know that the your initials stand for empowering solo moms everywhere which I just right. love. Yeah, I just met a French woman the other day, and she's like, I'm going on this site. I can't wait. And I was like, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Solo moms everywhere. So right. um, this is why I just thought it would be good for the show, because it's really saluting women or moms you know, no matter what their situation is, as far as solo moms and what they're going through. Roz, do, right. you, have any, do you have any questions uh, yourself? I have a question. Um, is a solo mom someone who is also co-parenting with uh, an ex at home, uh, who's not at home? But, so is that part of the equation? It is. We have quite a bit of, um, particularly in our Ask Esme section, there are a lot of questions about co-parenting, the, the stress and trials and tribulations of co-parenting, particularly over the holidays. It gets mm -hmm. and you know, making the schedules early on and. I can certainly attest to my older two now are 18 and 20, but we went through a lot of years of uh, co-parenting stress. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, so, yes, that is a solo mom as well. Anyone who has, is predominantly, you know, they're alone with their kids. So I sometimes consider myself a solo mom. My spouse travels at eight weeks at a time, and uh, I have five children that I parent for five weeks. And although I wouldn't co compare myself to the single mom who's, you know, perhaps struggling economically and doesn't have support, I certainly 
can relate to some of the issues about when you're the only one there to make the decision or the only one when the kid is hurt and you know you got one that you have to bring to the ER and the others are home and so I, I can relate I don't I'm not saying that I have the same challenge but I think that the term solo mom is meant to be encompassing so. mm -hmm. Thank you. that includes everybody well um, Roz I'm glad you got to tune in here at the end here at least so that's good <laughs> And um, um, also, Marika, is there anything else that you'd want to say, either about your site or any tips for solo moms at all? Well, I think that um, you know the one thing is not to be so hard on yourselves. I mean, I think that's the one. You know, if you have a New Year's resolution, don't say I'm going to lose 50 pounds or I'm going to, you know, eat vegan. I think it's like be be kinder to yourself and you know take care of yourself and realize that that makes you a better mom and you mentioned earlier like being the best mom you can be takes probably takes more help from other people and being forgiving and um, moving forward and realizing that you know I mean every day kids <laughs> are a challenge They're, it's you're putting out fires all day long it's not um, it's not a smooth sailing for anybody and so it's okay if there's little fires that have to get put out regularly you're probably doing a great job absolutely so, I think that's I, my main message I know I, I know. used to do an exercise do with some of my clients where I would say um, um, uh, write um, down right 10, 10 things, things that you love about yourself and, and it was just amazing the women struggled with that exercise and I remember one woman saying to me ten things that I like about me and I used to say well first start looking look in the mirror there must be you know don't be saying I oh I hate those legs or those hips or you know the wish I had different color hair I said just really look at the good things about yourself and then also include that you're probably a great person have a nice smile kindness whatever but I find that uh, kind of piggybacking off of what you said that's a great exercise to help women to just look at that list and I used to tell them keep it with you keep one in your office one in your purse and when you start to dump on yourself and say you're not good enough read that list of all the great things that you love about yourself so any way that you can make it work <laughs> for sure I really like the idea of having a community for women because women really like a sisterhood. I think uh, more than men, they like to talk among themselves, mm -hmm. share experiences and advice, and just feel someone is listening and having a place that they can go where they can vent, when they could ask questions, when they could look for support or find people who have similar situations is definitely very very supportive and nurturing for women so it, it just sounds like it's a wonderful community and I, I'm assuming that you are a national or international in scope? Yeah we are international yeah it was it was important to me um, because we had started a, a beta site just very small and a number of women from Australia and England were reaching out to us and so I went to my attorneys and I was like Let's make sure we can be international, <laughs> although our resources are in the U.S. Mm -hmm. but you're finding you're creating a safe space, and that's what women need for sure. I totally. Well, thank you so much for being on the show and, and giving us a different point of view on our show, but also honoring all solo moms out there, and we do that. We do honor them all and support them all. So thanks so much for taking the time to be on the show today. Well, Joni, Rosalind, I really appreciate taking the opportunity, and I'm excited for Esme this year, and I'm excited to have been here. So. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. And, Roz, uh, before we close, um, tune us in for a little bit about yourself, and then we'll move on here. Yes, the at the Child Centered Divorce Network website, which is childcentereddivorce.com, there's a wealth of resources, uh, tips, information, articles, interviews, advice, everything that anyone could possibly want, including a free ebook on post-divorce parenting. So make sure you visit and take advantage of all the services. And of course, I'm available as a divorce and parenting coach at any time for one-on-one -on -one support for you. And Joni, what have you been doing? Well, actually, we're excited for the new year, and we've taken the uh, Google Hangouts to another level. So we do group uh, live group coaching calls, and it's um, um, which includes uh, it's called I mean uh, how to emotionally and financially survive divorce. So we cover all angles, but that's at first. Com. 
So thanks again, ladies, for being on the show together. And um, we've got a little echo here, but that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you. So, so take care and take tune in to us next, next week. And have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Bye. <laughs> okay.